the great Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. It looks like we are oh, going we are into it. Game one of top eight, ladies Here and gentlemen. We go. Pokemon Stadium oh. 2. And of course, Ally immediately throwing out two grenades, almost a third. The Buzz finding a quick grab, but grenade actually saving Ally after the Edgeguard attempt. This is definitely a very surprising stage pick for me. I feel like Snake players definitely feel very comfortable on this stage. Ooh, the long last the hitbox up neutral and catching the air dodge. Yes. C4 on the edge of that side platform trying to catch him. And I do, it's, it's important to note that Rosalina's down B can absorb these projectiles. Very, very interesting counterplay. Yeah, but another facet of that is the fact that when she pulls in the projectiles, they can also blow up while she's pulling them in. So right. Snake can be a little bit tricky there and pull them out a little late, and then she can, uh, Rosalina can get punished for trying to absorb. And the active explosives will be a good counterplay for for the buzz. But I'm going to see right now what he does. He's pushing Luma to the middle of the center stage, trying to make Luma take a few of these hits. Not absorbing too much, though. Oh, Luma right there. The buzz trying to set up a combo right there. Okay. One of the most interesting, interesting things about Rosalina gameplay is that the buzz is going to be using Luma as much as possible to do some possible things that most characters cannot do. The fact that you have a pop tier character that can use another character for hitbox is really interesting here. Correct. And Luma will always generate given enough time. Nikita coming out. No oh, Luma tank. Oh, interesting. You can absorb that Nikita with no problem. Yeah, I believe he can even uh, hit Ally with the missile. Oh, that would be amazing. If he got one stock off that, that would be a crazy mental advantage. And a great up to from Ally to take the first stock of this top eight. Yeah, Ally taking the advantage here is huge. Rosalina is a very neutral base character, so if you take the first stock, it really becomes painful for Rosalina to take the kill. She definitely likes to sit on advantage as much as possible. One grenade behind him, one in front. Dash has cover it. A, kind of a high risky forward punch there. Might have been a flub. The buzz answering with his own stock. Taunting a little bit too. Yeah, the Buzz villain himself this tournament. I like this new the Buzz. Yeah, we we spoke to him earlier. We actually asked the Buzz, how confident are you on this ally? He said it was four out of ten is what he told us. So this but is what four out of ten the Buzz looks like. <laughs> I don't want to know what ten out of ten. Uh, the buzz I don't want to like. know. Actually, position Luma perfectly, but the up smash of Rosa and Luma, he was actually in between both hitboxes. Very lucky from ally there. Grenade yeah, the, to blow up. That Buzz grabbing the grenade from the gravitation pool right there. Up smash, and look for the full hop down air, but not a single hit connected. The Buzz Dash dancing in neutral, looking for an opening. Yeah, at this point, one thing that's really important is for Dash Attack to come through when Luma is around. I like absolutely using that Dash Attack to eliminate Luma, because Luma can be pushed off the level. Once she gets pushed off, uh, she cannot really recover or jump in any capacity. It's not like uh, Nana for Ice Climbers. That's a good point. One more Nair, trying to get that last late hit on his shield, but Ally is just holding it just a little bit longer than the Buzz is expecting. Two parries the, the on his own. Parry, yeah. yeah, on his own explosion. Yeah, Ally is not taking any chances here. Let, it, let, let the grenade come in, and when the edge guard comes, then he tries going for a heavier hit, maybe an up smash from Nikita. Great parry into a grab, but no follow-up. Yeah, I feel like maybe Ally potentially wanted to go for the optal there. Okay, two Nikitas, oh, both of them connected! That was impeccable on top of it, too. That was phenomenal play by Ally, putting two active hitboxes out there. The Buzz had no options in that case. Yeah, that was really creative. I don't think I've ever seen him do that. <laughs> I see four on the left platform nearly getting the buzz, but a low percent will do much. Full hits of Nair getting to 46%. Ally now playing the game we all know him for. Stay at high percent, keep his own ground, and tack on as much extra credit as possible before you lose your own stock. The buzz definitely full hopping quite a bit in neutral right now. Ally definitely waited for two or three jumps and then full hop back it right there. At this point in time, I feel like the buzz is neutral. It's pretty countered by Ally's placer right now. Ally's just pretty much waiting here. He has the lead. He's not just going to sit back and let the buzz approach. And anytime he sees a jump, he's going to punish that. It's, it's the classic case of this kind of matchup. No reason to approach if you don't give a reason to. Yeah, Ally definitely told us before the match that he was definitely going to set up 10. <laughs> <laughs> get those get those marshmallows out. And a few grenades while you're at it. The buzz time to the ledge now at 90. Finding himself in a very tight uh, situation here. Needs to be really, really careful because Ally is looking for an up tilt, looking for any sort of hard hit. Maybe in the air right there when they both get exploded by a grenade, looking up air. 142 now. Here comes back to the ledge. You might notice, you might notice Ally randomly blocking at certain points in time where he may not be in danger. And it's mainly because Luma is coming back to the level. So then he doesn't want to get hit while Luma's coming back. That gives a lot of extra range to Rosalina's toolkit. The Buzz finally finding that Nair into an up air, but it might be too little too late now. Can't get hit by any other heavy explosive. The Buzz looking to avoid any downer here, too. A backer. Oh, two hits on the shield, but he's still living barely at 151. 
That dash attack is just so effective at removing Luma from the stage. That could be it, and that is it. Yep, dash attack will do it right there. A great offensive option right there from Allen to take game one on Pokemon Stadium too. Still, the buzz brought back to one stock. Don't don't see him switching here, but of course he plays so many characters that it's hard to tell at this point. I feel like it's very important for the boss to analyze whether or not he wants to switch characters. This is a two out of three game, so the next game that Ally wins will be the end of the set. So important decisions coming through here, both in terms of stage and in terms of the character. Right. As is customary in Smash Bros. Tournament play, the stage comes before the characters. Always. And then the winner has to pick the character first, so then we have uh, both a stage and a character counter pick. And it's very interesting. Uh, Smash remains one of the only F uh, you know, major FTC titles which has stage kind of picking alongside, you know, character kind of picking. And for those of you unfamiliar, the stage, you know, it's not going to 100% dictate who wins, but it's undeniable that certain stages have factors that your character desperately can take advantage of or desperately you know, lose because of as well. Yeah, for example, there's some characters that are really good with walls, and there's some stages that have walls going down to the blast zone, so that you can use these walls when you affect pressure off the level. And it's little things in gimmicks like that that can affect matchups in terms of stages. And Zero, we are seeing the Olimar coming out. The buzz showing no fear. He says, nerfs, no problem. I'm going to go ahead and do my best. Mind you, he's also down a game here, and like you said, this is best of three, so all things considered, this is what you would call a gamble right now from the buzz. This is absolutely a gamble. I do feel like Olimar is absolutely capable of beating out Snake. We go for a flat stage for final destination, so it's going to be hard for Alec to land, especially onto those Olimar grabs because there's nowhere else to land but on the stage. Okay, Ally actually almost got a really good chain there using the first of the Nair into a forward tilt, but I think wasn't able to continue it. Meanwhile, the buzz is actually getting Ally already to 100%. Ooh, what a call out! What a phenomenal call out from the buzz doing Nair into a fully charged Pearl Pikmin, knowing Ally would run in with a full stock lead already. I feel like the buzz is definitely getting comfortable to Ally's dash attack, so every time Ally is at that mid range, the buzz is just getting ready to hold that out, getting him the first kill, very crucial here. Allies back here. It goes, uh, Stakes back here does go through some Pikmin, but you get, you take the risk of falling right next to the Allmark shield. You might get re-grabbed. Not a gamble you want to take, especially at the type percent. It's actually pretty insane to me how, despite the nerves, it almost looks like it didn't even matter. The buzz is that good. Right. Getting him off the stage here. The buzz only at 68% the entire game. And it, we doubted him at first, but this might have been the best pick currently, especially on this stage. Yeah, this match in particular is actually destruction. Olimar is not even an outfield kill, kill percent. All right, Ally using his best to shield this oncoming assault. Was this character even nerfed, Zero? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Three stock lead right now for DeBudge. Full confidence and just charging the forward smash in neutral. That little play was so optimal there. The buzz not only waited for the spot dodge to get the grab, but then he also threw the white Pikmin too for the additional damage when he knew Ally was going to retreat after that. This is looking almost like a three stock scenario. This is a complete change from game one. It might be. I think Ally is already thinking about a strategy for the next game. Gonna try to not give up right here with Smash. You never know about comebacks. Strange things can happen, especially in this video game. Yeah, very surprised it misses there. Ooh. What a tech. Yeah, absolutely. All right, 73, yeah, this is, you are correct. This might work very well be a three-star. Yeah, Ally is only really about 20% or so to, to die to a portal force smash here. And that's the thing, even if you shield, this is a, almost. The next one will do it for yeah, sure. Yeah, this is, this would be the greatest comeback in the history of Smash, no, the history of Smash Bros, I'll just say it. it we're, we're Ally to pull this back. If Ally win this, I will definitely have to shave my head. Yeah, I'll shave my beard with your head, like, immediately. <laughs> like, on commentary, Jess. The key oh, coming down. The, the buzz oh. barely. Playing duck hunt for a little bit. Now coming back up. Ally 140 versus a fresh Olimar with another stock in case he happens to mess up. I love the fact that Ally is actually trying to make the comeback happy. He's not giving up, and he's definitely pushing in as much as he can. Right. A lot of top players will simply just give up here because it's too much of a deficit to try, but Ally absolutely just trying his heart out. Yeah. And that is it. Purple up, uh, blue Ooh. up throw is going to be it. All right, the buzz with a successful counter pick using every color Pikmin exactly as intended. Blue for the throw kills, purple for the strong, meaty forward smashes, and then red and yellow for the range. Very phenomenal play. Honestly, it seems that he adapted to the nerfs with no problem, at least in that matchup. Yeah, I feel like definitely one of these matchups where 
it's more so about like careful spacing and maybe a little bit of camping. I feel like the nerves may not be so apparent, but in matchups where you, Olimar has to stand closer or maybe smash attack from up close, where you can tell the nerves a little bit better in terms of frame data, then definitely that will be more difficult for the buzz. But the buzz is very smart. He hasn't played full Olimar this entire tournament. He's only bring, bringing him out in specific matchups. For example, he used Olimar against Wishes. I got that confident win. And I guess his Joker too, both Pokemon Trainer and Joker. That's what he told us. Uh, he feels good about armor with his Joker. Question is, was that Town and City, I believe? They went to the stage. I just missed it. Ally does have multiple characters here, so I'm not sure if we're going to see a change. Nope. He's sticking out the snake for game three. Interesting. I, you know, he, he had a. Ally has a Mario. He has, he has a few characters under his belt, but Snake is by far his most tried and true. Going to go to Town and City here. Wants a little more room, a little more jumping on the platforms. Of course, FD are sort of forced to deal with Olimar's assault on the ground stage with nowhere much to go apart from the ledges, but even there, it's a dangerous spot. Yeah, Olimar's pivot grabs are especially deadly in FD because you don't really have room to trick the Olimar player and land in, and then they can throw out the grab and then you can punish. So this stage will make it a little bit easier for Ally to stay out, a little bit more mobile. And then he can also avoid the wow. Pikmin on the top of the platforms as well. I do like that use of back throw to dash attack. These early bread and butter combos against a character as light as Olimar is definitely what you need. Given the fact of how much Olimar can get off of one grab, even post nerfs. I like using down tilt to get rid of the Pikmin real quick. That's yep. one of the quickest tilts that Snake can use. Very powerful too. Okay, grenade. Gonna get him out of situation. He's gonna blow himself up first. Now he's at 55, quick forward to 68. The Buzz trying to follow up, not find that last hit. Great spot dodge forward to from Ally. Now the Buzz off the stage. Comes back. Ooh. Yeah, the Buzz trying to use the uh, B. The trick is landing option right there, but Ally not falling for it. I love that up air from Ally. Found the trajectory, read exactly where he was gonna come down, center stage, and got a quick stock from it. This is very important to take a lead in an attrition matchup like this because both players are definitely taking their time. And if you have Sasha massively with a heavy character like Snake like this, it means so much more than what it usually does. Right, might, might not play in your favor doing so. Two grenades blowing up in center stage. I like using the grenade to cover his get up right there. He got up as the grenade is exploding, using the invincibility from the ledge. He did a confident spot dodge right next to the Buzz's face, but didn't take advantage of it. That shield now is super tiny. At this point, you want to take that hit, tank it, rather than have your shield break. Yeah, I like definitely trying to avoid getting uh, dying here as much as possible. Simply because if you go to a lower percent, then Olimar gets access to all of his early percent combos. Gets the wow. neutraler off of the grenade here. No double jump for the Buzz. Completely the different ledge. game from game two. And notice, notice the buzz is all Mars right here. Two purples and a blue. He's looking for blood, looking for nothing but a kill right here. That might be his detriment. Maybe he's focusing too much on it. Makes me eat my words immediately. That was really tricky. The buzz used two purples there and then followed up with a blue grab. Really difficult sequence. Right. Off the stage once more. Nikita going down. No tech right there, of course. And now Ally one stock away from entering our winner's finals. Yeah, we might actually see Ally in winner's finals here. He has a massive lead. A whole stock in a matchup like this is a big deal. I mean, it is a very viable option for Ally to just camp out the rest of the match, really. I mean, it is four minutes left on the clock. Which now begs the question for DeBuzz. Do I stay back or do I go in? That's a very tough question to answer. I mean, if you stop camping, then you might take a lot of unnecessary damage. But up to what point do you want to take a risk? Uh, I would say about right now. <laughs> yeah, this is this is looking very good for the buzz. He oh. did almost 100 damage immediately here. That was almost a phenomenal down smash on the side platform. Would have guaranteed a stock there. Ally narrowly avoiding it. A down tilt. A great grab. Not quite going to kill just yet. 135 for Ally. The next one will do it, though. Whoa, it didn't kill. Very interesting. That was the, I think that was the white pigment. Oh, so much damage off the explosives right there. Looking like a Michael Bay movie right now, Zero. <laughs> we're, we're waiting to see what will be next. Pearl Pikmin, but every time the buzz goes a little too hard, if you extend a little bit, every percent matters. Now, even the Cypher right there, 91 so far. Every hit of down here connecting the buzz on his last limbs, 112. The buzz almost at oh. that is, ooh, oh. what, a, what a play right there. Forcing the air dodge play from the buzz. Getting the first hit of neutral into one jab into the turnaround up though. Just allied things. That